Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. This is a podcast dedicated to helping people who are owners of bookkeeping, accounting, and tax businesses, building their business, offering quality services, and getting paid what they're worth. I'm your host, Roger Kinect, president of Universal Accounting Center, and it's my honor to have on the show each and every week experts to come on and share their insights as it relates to having successful accounting, bookkeeping, and tax businesses. It's here that we want to address a variety of topics each and every week that actually help you work on your business, ranging from marketing, selling, pricing, tech stack, client relationships, just a variety of things that you need to be aware of as you're running your business. And today's going to be no exception. I'm honored to have on the show Max Emma. Max actually happens happens to have a great story. It's the story of books keeping. It's when he started back when he was 18 years old. Max was actually immigrating from the former Soviet Union to the U.S. where he initially worked in corporate accounting and finance, but found it deeply unfulfilling. He celebrated his Freedom Day from corporate America on July 3rd, 20, 2002, actually, when he shifted to a family-run landscaping maintenance business. Despite initially growing the business to an impressive $4 million, a lack of financial oversight and the 2008 recession led to bankruptcy. Max persevered, however, restarting a, a smaller landscaping and maintenance business. And when he did this, he also then started Bookkeeps, basically a business in his garage offering part-time bookkeeping services to help the landscaping company pay their bills. Now, gradually, bookkeeping actually helped become a full-time business for Max, actually allowing him to sell the landscaping company. And now with their six franchise locations and one corporate location, it is a fast-growing bookkeeping business for the bookkeeping industry, where he is ushering in a whole new era of expansion. So Max, welcome to the show. Thank you, Roger. It's great to be here. This is going to be a wonderful conversation. I have so many things that I'm excited to ask you. So first of all, I want to start with your story. Uh, clearly coming from the former Soviet Union, uh, that's more of a communistic type economy coming into a capitalistic economy. Uh, you definitely went into corporate accounting and finance. I'm just curious, what did you notice that was different when you did that? Well, I mean, when I came, I was 18 years old, so I didn't have like a real job in the former Soviet Union. So I can't compare how it was there versus how uh, it was in the United States. All I know that we just had to start from scratch and from the point of learning English and finding the uh, unique ways of practicing the language that gave me a really good head start. For example, back in 1993, I mean, internet did not exist. So um, I, need, I was going to English school to learn the language, but that clearly wasn't enough. So I needed to find an opportunity to actually practice my English. So I came up with my own uh, strategy and it worked great. Uh, back then, um, all the 1-800 numbers for all the credit cards all the call centers were located in the United States. So I was just calling 1-800 numbers for all the credit cards in the United States and speaking <laughs> to them for about 45 minutes uh -huh. while they were explaining to me why I can't have a credit card without a credit history, which I already knew. But that gave me 45 minutes of free practicing over the phone. And as soon as I was done with <laughs> Amex, I was starting doing Visa, and then I was doing MasterCard, the city, whatever, whatever it was. And since there were so many people, I was doing it day in, day out. I was literally standing by the phone booth. I remember that. Three calls, and I was just standing there with my can of Coke or whatever, and just, you know, doing that. I was getting two to three hours of practice a day. That is probably the most novel way I've heard of someone learning the English language. So that is a fascinating story. I've, I've coincidentally spoken to numerous people that have gone through Universal's programs as it relates to accounting that have come from the Eastern Bloc countries. And uh, many came with uh, degrees and experience in accounting, but they wanted to kind of formalize their instruction and understanding here in the United States before getting into the workforce. So uh, it's been interesting to me to hear their perspectives just because it is a little different. But you're to your point, you were younger and uh, obviously got into the profession. So talk about Freedom Day. Uh, on July 3rd, 2002, you actually shifted and started in your involvement with the family-run landscaping business. Uh, that was a, a great opportunity. You grew it. It was obviously a multi-million dollar business. And then came the the uh, bankruptcy of it all. Tell us a little bit about that just, just real quickly. Well, I mean, it was, I was working for Qualcomm. It was a great experience doing corporate accounting and corporate finance. And then I just realized that the corporate world was not for me. 
you know, that deep in my heart, I'm an entrepreneur. I might not known that at the time, but I'm like, you know, corporate life is not for me. You know, I've been joking that I was kissing the wrong butts. So that was my, <laughs> my issue, you know? So like, you have to have a talent to kiss the right ones. And I guess I wasn't good at it. So I'm like, okay, the problem is that's not for me. So I gave a two week notice and I left. And so the last paycheck I got in my life from somebody but me was on July 3rd, uh, 2002. So that was, uh, you know, God, almost 22 years ago. Um, and then joined the family business with three employees, grew to 96 employees, but uh, uh, we were so busy growing and not paying attention to the financials that at some point, plus the recession was taking place, they stopped building houses, we're doing track homes mostly. Um, we didn't have a choice but go to uh, declare bankruptcy. We did, I remember the last thing I did, pay every employee that we had, I gave them paycheck Wonderful. and literally hang the keys on the barn where we had all the equipment and everything. We had like, I don't know, 20 trucks and, you know, tractors and whatever, a lot of equipment. And that was the problem. We were overcapitalized, hoping that the building boom is going to be taking forever, which, you know, it obviously it wasn't. And um, that's it. It was pretty depressing, but then uh, we were able to, with my wife, who is also a co-founder of bookskeeping, Elena Emma. So we, uh, you know, were upset for a few <laughs> days, but we had uh, two little kids we had to feed. So uh -huh. we started the business again from scratch. And then that was more on a smaller level, just the maintenance, not construction. And that became more successful. But deep in our hearts, both of us being accountants, we're like, you know what? If we knew our numbers, we would, wouldn't be in this situation. So we were started thinking about, you know, bookkeeping practice, controller practice, and then that's how bookkeeping started in the garage. So I'm curious, I have to ask how you came up with the name in, in the sense of how you're spelling it. It's spelled B-O-O-X-K-E-E-P-I-N-G. So why the X? So because we wanted to trademark it and we're like, we need to change one letter. And it was like literally um, uh, just playing with words, one word, uh -huh. a second word. So Still to the date, uh, me and Elena, we're arguing who came up with this name. We, we don't remember, <laughs> but it was more like sitting. And, 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 and if, you, if you want to know, you know, that level of detail. So uh, we both had some kind of, uh, uh, you know, like a strap throat, which you, you know, our kids managed to bring from the daycare. And then uh -huh. we were at our friend's birthday party at a bar and we couldn't drink because we were, you know, on antibiotics. So we're sitting outside. And just literal, when everybody else was drinking inside, we were just drinking, you know, Coke and just talking and playing the words. And then somewhere on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles and the bar, we came up with the name Bookskeeping. And we just, you know, next day we trademarked it. I love it. I love the backstory. Just hearing that is is wonderful. All right. So now let's talk about this. You start the business. You are growing it from a part-time business to obviously something more. It becomes full-time. Tell me about that that evolution, that growth. What can you remember about it, and uh, what what insights do you have for those who, who are listening about starting the bookkeeping business? Well, my advice would be try everything because you don't know what's going to work. Like obviously, a lot of people give you different advices, but you don't know what's going to work for you. You don't know what your niche is going to be. I mean, we were specifically told by a lot of people that hey. Just the bookkeeping is not going to work. You have to offer the controller services. You have to offer, you know, CFO services, and you can bill more for that, and so on and so forth. And now, looking back, I'm glad we did not listen. I know a lot of great firms that offer all of it, including taxes, but that's mm -hmm. just not us. Our sandbox, our play area is just the bookkeeping, okay? Uh, I tell the clients, look at us as the factory that produces uh, financial statements. That's it. Our job is to get you a package at the end of the month. Here's your PNL. Here's your balance sheet. Boom. You want an advice? You go to a CFO. You go to your CPA. We're not going to give you advice. Even though we have some people on staff who can do it, this is just not the service that we provide. You have to learn to say no, because if you say yes to everything, you're not going to be successful, in my opinion. Well, you run the risk of becoming a jack of all trades. So 
that's one of the things that I really like is you're choosing to be, uh, you know, just focus on the bookkeeping side of things. And I've worked with many of firms that they choose to be specifically like a bookkeeping business or a tax business, and they don't get distracted with the other services, which is entirely fine. It's their business model, and you've clearly done very, very well with it. So I'm curious with regards to your business, there's one thing to be successful. It's another thing to say, I've got a process that I believe others will be willing to pay. I'm going to franchise. Tell me about the decision to actually now franchise. So there was one extra step to get in, uh, you know, to franchising by accident, by an introduction from somebody we knew, we got introduced to a franchisor of a U.S. brand that, you know, liked uh, our story and then started pushing our services to uh, their franchisees. And uh -huh. before we knew, I mean, I didn't know much what franchising was at the time. Obviously, I knew what, what franchising was, what McDonald's was and so on and so forth. But, you know, we didn't do any work for franchising. So before we knew, we started working for this with this one brand. We got involved with International Franchise Association. And now to make the story short, we are a preferred bookkeeping provider for over 90 franchise brands in the United States, from big guys like Sport Clips and Fast Science Signorama to some emerging ones. And some of the brands even make us mandatory. So their franchises have to use bookkeeping. So that's mm -hmm. how we got involved with franchisors. And, you know, started going to the expos and trade shows and meeting these people. And, you know, there is, well, I guess me being from Russia, alcohol has to be involved, you know, at some point, you know. <laughs> a so, little bit of vodka here and there. Yes, yes. And we don't discriminate. It doesn't have to be vodka. It can be red wine as well. Um, <laughs> so uh, at night, you know, sitting at the bar and talking to other franchisors, I'm like, wow, these people are really cool. And I see they want to help and they want you to be successful. So at some point I say, you know what? I want to be one of them. And then. That's how the idea of bookkeeping as the franchise model uh, came to mind. And literally, uh, we wrote the business plan. We started, you know, doing the research and it was a process. And then we got it done and applied, uh, got uh, all the, you know, documents in order. With our luck, we got the uh, old documents ready to go the day we went into lockdown. So officially, we've been franchising since March 16th or 17th of 2020. But as you can imagine, uh, we weren't doing anything for the first year and a half because we had to completely redo the uh, business model to yeah. uh, live through COVID because uh, books keeping at a time and still has offices all over the world. So we have people in different time zones and different continents. So to make sure everybody's working. And then some people couldn't go to the office. Some people, I mean, we had to deal with the quarantine. I mean, US wasn't actually as bad as some other countries. So um, nothing was done on the franchising. So on books we were selling, but in fact we weren't. So it took us about a year and a half before we actually said, okay, we are ready to go. I'm loving this. You know, just that little bit of a background is so helpful simply because there is a difference between running a business and choosing to then franchise it. And there's a process to that. Uh, I've been fortunate that I've been able to work with three different franchises so far, uh, now uh, collaborating with you a little bit, the, the uh, fourth. So uh, lots of nuances about that. But here's the thing that's interesting. I work so often with entrepreneurs who are starting their own accounting, bookkeeping, and tax businesses, and some of whom consider the franchise route. And there's a, a number of pluses and minuses for either. And I'm just curious, when you're working with a franchisee, someone who's saying, I'd like to actually get this turnkey process that I can buy into and be willing to pay royalties for, what are some of the, the advantages that having a franchise offers for that individual that is buying into it and getting started? Look, it's not only what we, that, well, what we can tell our franchisee what to do, but it's also what we can suggest them not to do because we made a ton of mistakes. And I can probably will have to do three podcasts to go over the mistakes <laughs> that we made. And, you know, it did not happen uh, – to me, it happened for me. It didn't happen to us. It happened for us because it, we, we learned. I learned a lot and I'm grateful that I had this experience. You know, I'm looking back like, should I should have done it. I should have done it differently. I mean, that's I was like that in the beginning. But now 
getting older and I hope wiser, um, you know, I'm learning to just be grateful and accept it. And, um, you know, so that's what we tell our franchisees, like, hey, you know, you can try, but we would not do that because we did that and that's the result uh, we received. I mean, with us giving them the turnkey, they have all the contracts, they have all the collateral. Right now, bookkeeping is on page one, Google organically for a lot of bookkeeping categories, pretty much in all 50 states. Um, so this is awesome. It took a long time to get there because there are yeah. 120,000 uh, uh, bookkeeping companies. That's the number I've read. I don't know how true it is, but that's what I've read. Um, so and being uh, the, the first 10, 15 on Google, organically that's awesome and uh for me at least in, in my book and so that's what we can give to our franchisees plus uh you know the two key components that makes us different from uh, um you know having your own business as i mentioned we are a preferred bookkeeping provider for over 90 franchise brands so let's say we have a franchisee in miami if a new fast science or new signorama opens in miami they get automatically an introduction to this client. So we do provide clients, which is great. You know, I'm loving how you're describing this because there are a number of advantages to having a franchise. Um, I'm going to give you a description here, and I want you to tell me if this is a great way to illustrate the difference between having a franchise and having an independent firm. I'm going to equate it to, for example, um, basically a uh a restaurant. You can clearly start your own restaurant, offer your own menu items. You can uh, do your own marketing and so forth, or you can buy into a franchise. And with the franchise, you're getting basically a style guide. It's the signage and everything that's in place, but you're bringing in perhaps that that branding, that corporate reputation that's going to be followed by a customer base. But they're going to tell you what the menu is, and they're going to tell you how to do it right, and they're going to tell you how to follow a certain process that's been proven elsewhere. Um, certain people gravitate to one or another. Um, I think that's one of the things that's really appealing about both is it's it's the same. It's basically the same type of thing, but two different ways to approach it. Um, w would you add anything more to that? Well, I mean, using your analogy, um, if you look at a pizza, you know, franchise versus a pizza store, you're probably mm -hmm. gonna go through many many pizza pies before you figure out the right amount of cheese that you have to put on and the right amount of sauce before you figure out and how long you have to do it and it's, it's a science to to the second to the minute and you know where you buy your flour and so on and so forth so that's where we came to play we teach people how to do it right and again there might be better ways of doing it there might be different ways of doing it i mean if you take Domino's and pizza hut they do taste uh, differently and you know each of them thinks they're the best brand and i mean who am i to judge but my point is they have their market shares and huge market shares and of course there are smaller uh, pizza franchises which are also uh, great but you know our franchisees don't have to guess they know exactly how much cheese they have to put in their bookkeeping business and another advantage which is huge as you know you uh was what was what you do and you know all the training that you provide, Roger, you know that it's very hard to find qualified, uh, you know, labor right now, qualified employees to do the work. So yes, we yes. provide our franchisees with qualified staff to do the bookkeeping. So really, all it's an optional, they don't have to do it, but if they want to, they get the staff, we are housing them, we pay their benefits, we, we train them. All they have to do, just say, interview a couple of them, say, I like Jennifer. And Jennifer, de facto, becomes an employee of our franchisees. So they can concentrate on doing business development and being a face to talk to the client versus just sitting there and hiring people and going through training and you know spending their time on these tasks. I love it. Now, obviously, being an entrepreneur is is unique. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur. What advice would you have for a young entrepreneur as they're considering whether or not they want a franchise versus go out on their own? Well, the biggest piece of advice would be two words, opportunity cost. You can figure out yourself, uh, you know, how to do it and what mistakes not to make 
the question becomes how long is it going to take for you uh, to figure it out? Like, let's say it takes two years. What head start can you have in these two years if you know that on day one? That's it. Um, actually, another example I can provide, I mean, QuickBooks is designed for non-accountants. Don't you agree that the basic reconciliations can be done by non-accountants? So when I talk to a potential client on a like, corporate level and they ask me, so why would I use you? I'm doing it myself every Sunday. I'm like, how long is it taking you? Oh, two to three hours. Oh, great. So two to three hours times 4.33 weeks, that's, you know, let's say 10 hours. If we give you 10 hours back, what can you do with this time? Can you spend it with your family? Can you just go and for a beach walk? Or do you want to just get on the phone and start calling potential clients? How much you can grow your business? So all comes to an opportunity cost, okay? It's not like it's a rocket science and we're going to make somebody like very successful person overnight. We're just going to tell them what we know. Our uh, manual a training manual is about 800 pages. So they get all of the stuff. I mean, I said, all the agreements, I mean, all the things they need to know uh, to run a successful business. I really appreciate you mentioning opportunity costs. That's so true as it relates to business. There are certain things that uh, we just don't recognize as delaying or postponing our success simply because of the time suck that they become. And uh, there is an opportunity cost. So I appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, when it relates to entrepreneurs and starting a business you clearly started yours you started it part-time grew up uh, full-time with bookkeeping had the opportunity to uh, be that solo entrepreneur what do you think the experience for the the individual who buys the franchise is different than you when you started the business and went through that growth phase of starting well i mean when we started me and elena uh, we didn't know what we didn't know. So we were just, you know, trying to figure out everything ourselves. What flyer is going to work? Uh, you know, what, how to do the networking correctly. I mean, how many times we have to talk to, uh, to a client. I mean, we get a lot of referrals from CPAs. So we have like the whole strategy on how to provide white label bookkeeping to CPA firms and how to be their, uh, partners. So, we are just one phone call away when a CPA firm needs uh, bookkeeping services done for their clients. So all of that took us a while to develop. Like we were doing and wasn't successful. And I mean, we do disclose all our financials for the past 12 years in our franchise development document. So people mm -hmm. can see where we were and we can explain every dollar, every expense. I mean, because we know how it was spent, you know. And, and again, as I said, I admitted some of the spendings, they were wrong. I would not do that if I knew it now, but we had to try. Yeah. Now, you brought up something earlier that I'd like to go back to, and it was the struggle that so many are facing right now in finding qualified staff, individuals to actually help in the growth of the business. And uh, one of the things that keeps coming up is the idea of offshore services, leveraging some of the international companies that are out there servicing the accounting profession. Your franchise, uh, do you utilize offshore services? Is that something that you see is going to be helpful as you grow and help these franchisees be, success be successful? Absolutely. We do uh, offer that. But when people ask me, are you outsourcing your bookkeeping? My answer is no, because everybody who works for bookkeeping are bookkeeping employees. They just happen to be outside of the United States. Like we have a very large office in Philippines, but everybody in Philippines works from uh, our office. So they all come to one place, they're all sitting next to each other. So even the employees that would be working for our franchisees, they're sitting at the desk next to bookkeeping corporate employees. So they have an issue about, uh, you know, a certain client, a certain, let's say it's a franchisee, I'm gonna use fast sign as an example again. So franchisee of fast signs before they start uh, asking their supervisor a question they can ask somebody next next to them like hey how do you deal with this issue oh that's what i do okay thank you and that's done in 30 seconds so it's a collective wisdom okay so that's why we are not outsourcing we are making sure that people are uh you know right next to each other working from the office and you know we're really big on culture our hashtag is cool bean counters so that's actually being pushed to our employees. If we see that 
a potential employee of bookkeeping is not matching the culture, we will not hire him or her. I love it. Love, love, love it. So I'm curious, with regards to franchising, what is the biz- biggest misconception, misunderstanding that you have found as you've had conversations with people about their opportunity to become a franchisee? What What's a misunderstanding that you've seen? Well, I mean, one of the big ones is the pricing. People like, well, how much should I charge? What, well, just tell me, how much will I charge for this type of client? I'm like, I'm not going to tell you. Let's figure it out together because it depends on your overhead. It depends where you located. Let's be honest. Um, somewhere in the middle of the country, you can charge the rates that you can charge in the city of San Francisco, or city of New York. Uh-huh. That's, that's just, you know, that's a fact. Whether you like it or not, this is not yes. the price of, of a burger, a McDonald's, that it's the same for Big Mac. I mean, allegedly in New York and in San Diego and in Kansas. You know, this is different services. I mean, what do you provide? How many years of experience you have? So the misconception that we're going to tell them what to charge. I'm like, we're not going to tell you. We're going to teach you how to price it so it's enough for you and it's enough for us because we are getting the royalties, okay? And then, so that, that that's, I, I, see, I see that all the time. Uh, also, um some people are thinking that it's a dictatorship, uh, that franchise, being a franchisor, that we tell them exactly what to do. And I tell them, hey, we are your partners. We are in the business together and we own it 90-10. You own 90% of it, we own 10% of it. That's really what it is because your success is our success. Yes, there are some rules that um, they have to follow, like bookkeeping logo that is trademarked is red and black. We're not going to let somebody to make it green and yellow, even though if it looks cool on their T-shirt, because these are the corporate colors. So here we're going to say strictly, no, you cannot do that. But, you know, if they have any ideas, we have like a suggestion uh, box. They just send us an email. And, you know, usually because we are a young franchise, we make a decision, you know, right away. So one of our franchisees just had an idea how to do digital marketing. And I'm like, Give me a proposal and then let me do a research. Let me consult with our marketing company. And maybe we're just going to roll it for uh, everybody. Love it. Very good. Now, the accounting profession, I dare say it's changing. It's evolving. It's changed, in my opinion, quite a bit in the last three years. It's changed quite a bit in the last 10 years. I mean, there's definitely certain milestones that you can identify. Um, I've been doing this now for over 20 years, so I've seen things happen. Where do you see the future of accounting going as it relates to the franchise and more importantly, just the industry, the profession itself? Look, I mean, I hear it all the time and it's a conversation that AI is going to replace the humans and, you know, people will not see the accountants, people will not see the bookkeepers. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in, you know, 75 years. I'm not planning to be around uh, then, but... I can tell you that in the next, in my opinion, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, you st- will still need humans. It just right now, it takes less, less time for a human to work on clients' books. So I can see it in the last, uh, uh, God, 12 years doing it. Like I can see, I mean, QuickBooks gets smarter, other softwares, a lot of plugins, you know, Bank Connect. I mean, you remember good old days when they had to manually enter everything from the bank statement and do the research and do the reconciliation. So um, that obviously was taking a long time. So now, as it takes us less time and we use a lot of technology, we actually pass on the savings to the clients. So instead of charging the same what we were charging before, we do charge less. Yes, we have to account for inflation. We have to account for, you know, higher labor uh, cost and so on and so forth. But still, if it's now taking us an hour versus six hours, we're not going to charge clients for six hours. And I still see some, I call it old firm. I would call it old-minded firm. They're just still charging what they were charging before and maybe even more. And I think it's unfair to a client. And the only reason they have the clients is because client doesn't know that they're being cheated on. So that's just my strong opinion that if it takes us less time, let's pass it on to, to a client, the savings to the client. So if, for example, now we can do three times more clients uh, in the same amount of time, okay, then we're going to have a uh, 3x number of clients. And then as it gets faster, and instead of, you know, 
20 hours is going to take us three hours. Perfect. Then we're going to have six to seven clients done by the same person in the same amount of time. And I am fine with that. I mean, the market is huge. I mean, uh, the last number I've seen was $4.2 billion a year in the United States alone, just the bookkeeping, you know, outside of payroll, outside of consulting, just the bookkeeping. And the number is probably three to four years old. So it's even more now, you know, it's enough market share for me. It's okay. I, I, I can do it. I know there is enough clients. There is no shortage of, of clients. You just have to be, uh, you know, uh, confident that you can do the work and you can provide uh, the quality work to the clients. That's it. Well, there's a few things that you brought up that I'm, I'm very pleased with. One, the abundance mindset that you have, that there's clearly a demand, that there's opportunity out there and that there's a, a chance for us to really service and make a difference for the small business community. The other thing I really appreciate is the fact that you're able to recognize that there is a human component to the accounting process and that even with the various technol technological increases or improvements, AI being one of them, uh, we're not going anywhere. We're, we as an accounting profession still have a place, uh, we're still relevant, and there's still opportunity as it relates to servicing the small business community. So um, I agree with you, although the tools may be changing and our workflow might improve, it doesn't mean that we as a, as a profession or as a, uh, as a career aren't uh, able to look forward to the, the uh, future bright, with a bright hope. So that's uh, very important. Now, as it relates to the franchise, uh, one of the things that I wanted to also ask is with regards to the, the sense of community, the franchisee, one of the pluses that comes from that is the fact that you've got other individuals that are peers doing a very similar thing because they're each following the same process, following the same system. They're all bought into the same idea. What can you say about the franchisee community? So franchisee of bookkeeping, again, because we have this hashtag cool bill counter, essentially it's way more uh, of that than just, you know, a cool slogan. Uh, we really believe that, you know, we can be cool. Um, we are making sure that people are like-minded. So one of the things that we offer to our franchisees is a weekly town hall where we have a dedicated time and members of bookkeeping corporate team comes in. Uh, franchisees, they can make it, they come in, and then it's the same time, same day of the week, but then it also gets recorded. And then we discuss any issues they might have. Pricing, oh, I have this client, and the other franchisees say, oh, I'm listening, you know, I want to hear how you do that. So we have this opportunity. We are uh, small enough not to do the uh, conferences yet, but you know, at some point, that's definitely something we're going to be offering. Plus, it's a continued education, not just the accounting education, what, what you provide. We're talking about sales education, that we provide six months of um, ongoing sales coaching, okay, with the live sales trainer. And also, we provide one year of executive coaching. Uh, after they sign the franchise agreement. And executive coaching, that's done by Elena, by my co-founder. Um, you know, she's doing it for companies like PepsiCo and other companies, you know, and she's charging a lot of money for that. But all our employees and our franchisees get her services at no charge because, again, their success is our success. So you get an executive coach that works with you to get you to the peak of your performance. I mean, that alone, it's worth more than the franchise fee you paid, okay? So it's like, you know, a, a free MBA and you get that uh, for a year. So there are a lot of things that we offer to franchisees, uh, but in return, we are asking them to be open with us. If there is something we're not doing to their satisfaction, just let us know. I mean, we also humans, we are learning as we go. I love this. Well, one of the things I'd like to ask now is about you personally uh, coming to the United States as you did when you were younger. Now you're running a successful bookkeeping uh, franchise. Uh, what do you think of the opportunity that you've experienced and how has your life changed being here in the States and now being a franchise owner as you are? You know, I'm humbled and I'm grateful for everything I went through and uh, um you know, immigrating, coming from one country to another, I don't care how old you are, it's a stress. You know, I came, I mean, again, I had limited English and yes, I had to find ways to learn it, but I do remember, you know, my first job in the United States. Uh, uh, I was working for a restaurant, like a fast food place. They hired me, I worked for a day, and then they're like, well, we're not, it's not gonna work for us. 
they didn't pay me, they didn't offer me lunch. I had no idea you're not allowed to do that, but they pretty much got a free labor for eight hours, okay? So I, I, I had, I mean, I had to eat my, um, you know, share of, uh, yeah. Humble pie. Uh, yes, pretty pretty much. I was looking. I was looking for this word without saying it. <laughs> but but and then you know working at the restaurant, my second job, and being a bus boy, and then uh, the other bus boys, they were keeping all the tips and they weren't giving me anything because again I didn't know that I'm supposed to get some. So and I'm you know seeing that. But then I I closed my eyes on that and kept moving and. You know, got where I got, got the education, you know, was working at Costco for five years through my uh, education, through university, and then got scholarship and, you know, all of this stuff. So just, you know, hard work pays off. So that's what I learned. And, you know, I know everybody's saying America is the, uh, you know, country of opportunities. It's definitely true, especially what's going on right now in the former Soviet Union. I'm grateful that we came when we came because I wouldn't want to be living there right now. Um, but you have to work hard. So when somebody tells me, oh, it's hard, or oh, it's impossible, or oh, I don't have money for the education, I'm like, BS. You you just don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to do it, you know, uh, strongly enough because, you know, if you want something, you can make it happen. I mean, financial aid, loans. I mean, there are a lot of opportunities for you to go get your education and move up in the world. You know, Max, I, I am so grateful you said that. I have spoken to so many individuals who have experience like you have what, what is often referred to as the American dream. There is a lot to be said about coming over from another country, a different culture, not knowing the language, uh, you, you've done so much, you've accomplished so much, and it's clearly with hard work and effort. And uh, there, there are a lot of things to be grateful for. And I'm, I'm glad you shared what you did, because I, I do believe the listeners needed to hear that. Uh, the thing I would add to that is simply this, it doesn't come without hard work and sacrifice, it does take effort. And uh, that's one of the things that I think sometimes people forget is, uh, just thinking it and believing it isn't enough. You've got to act. And so you're, you've done a great deal of work, hard work, and you've made it happen. So congratulations. I'm very happy to be able to share your story here on the show. So here's, you were going to say something? No, no, I was just going to say that, you know, the price I paid, I was during my college years, only I visited one college party because I had to work almost full time and taking 18 credits, you know, at a time. So I miss the college life, so which you know, I was sad for a while, but I'm, I made it up for that when I got my first job. I was like partying, like you know, I, I I got my student life late in life, but you know, I I did I did party enough, you know, after. But during college years, I was studying, working, working, studying. So not, I mean, I didn't have a life outside of these two things. So so that's you say you you mentioned the price. So. Yes, we have to pay price for everything. Nothing is free, okay? Nothing. You have to pay for everything. That was my price, and I'm glad I paid it. You know, that, I can relate to that. Uh, I got married when I was in college. I worked full-time while I was in college, and uh, it was work in school, work in school. I don't, I don't remember going to an athletic event, a social, a party. I didn't do any of that simply because of the fact that uh, – I had a family that I was starting being a newlywed and at the same time was working full time. So uh, I agree with you. It took hard work and uh, I don't look back on my college years with uh, a whole bunch of friendships and uh, parties. That's that's not my history. So I, I can relate to that. All right. Here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to kind of wrap this up. I really appreciated this conversation. I was very much looking forward to it. Having worked with franchisees and franchisors over the years, I've really seen basically both perspectives, and I really appreciate the insights that, Max, you were able to share with us here today, simply because as individuals build the premier accounting firm, it can involve, obviously, taking that franchise route, and I think that that's a viable solution for many individuals. And so uh, with that in mind, let me just kind of point out a few things, first of all, to the listeners. We have in the episode description some information that uh, Max is pr uh, providing that you can actually take advantage of, where you can can reach out and find out more about the franchise opportunity with Bookkeeps Franchise. And with that, uh, find out what you can do to actually take advantage of that in your local area and have an, a location there. The thing that's very nice is he's providing a discount 
for those who, when speaking with them, actually mentioned this podcast episode in Universal Accounting Center. So definitely take advantage of that information in the episode description. As for everyone else, as you're considering working on your business and starting your business, I do want to encourage you to basically check out the turnkey business plan in the episode description. It just basically talks of the essential things that you need as you're considering starting your business and how it may relate to considering the franchise option. But the last thing I want to mention is the fact that Universal Accounting Center is a post-secondary school for accounting professionals. We are here to actually help with the training as it relates to your staff. And so whether you're growing your business and needing to find employees or train those that you have, Universal Accounting Center, Center is committed to helping you have on staff qualified individuals so that you can provide quality services. And so for that information, definitely check out the episode description. As for the uh, summary, kind of as a recap of our conversation, one of the things I really appreciated was Max sharing his story. Uh, I loved basically the idea of coming over here and that that uh, coincidental starting with nothing and yet building something, uh, coming to the point that you actually have this phenomenal business that unfortunately ended up uh, going bankrupt with the hardships of 2008 that that uh, hurt a lot of businesses. And I do remember that distinctly. Uh, going through that was very difficult, even for universal accounting. It, it caused a great deal of change for us, uh, impacted us on a number of levels. And yet here we are today, like uh, so many others who have kind of pushed through it and thrived. The other thing that was important is just the the starting of the bookkeeping business, starting part-time in the garage, starting with his wife, uh, coming up with the name, trademarking it, and then building something that ultimately could be trademark or uh, franchised. I really appreciated the story of getting involved with the franchising community, going to those conferences and seeing what opportunity that is so that you can actually take the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, what's worked, and turning those into franchise opportunities for individuals. Clearly, there's a, a demand out there. There's a need, and Max has identified how to service that and provide people a quick path to actually providing bookkeeping services and doing so with the turnkey model. And I think that's something worth noting. And then the other thing that I really appreciated was Max sharing his his uh, sacrifices, the things that he actually did put on the table to make this happen. I think we all need to recognize that as we're working from an entrepreneurial point of view, there are sacrifices that we make. There are things that we either neglect or that we postpone or we put off all because we have to prioritize and basically make a choice. And he clearly did that and it's paying off now very, very well. And I'm eager to see that he is able to help others do the same. So Max, with that being said, what final thought would you like to share with the audience? Well, you know, all I wanted to say that uh, um, even if you are not the right person for a franchise at this point and you're just studying, let's have a conversation. You know, I was uh, lucky enough to have enough mentors in my life uh, that helped me. This may be one piece of advice, but that changed my life. And again, I remember each and every person that I met in my life that actually gave me some kind of uh, useful advice. And sometimes I wouldn't use it or use it maybe later in life, but I do remember it. So my point is, even if you are not a candidate right now, let's have a conversation. You know, if we can be of any help, it's an abundance mindset. I 100% believe in it. It's enough for everybody. It's a huge pie. You know, we are not fighting to take the market share. I mean, if somebody can get a market share of $4.2 billion, significant one, good for them. But so far, nobody has done it. And I don't think that ever can be done because bookkeeping in a lot of communities is a local business. People keep their finances close to their heart. Okay, So they're not going to let a national company uh, run with it. So they want to have a local presence. So, and that's what our franchisees do. They provide local presence with the support of a national brand. Love it. Very well said. You know, Max, I really appreciate you sharing that because, yes, take advantage of the opportunity to speak with Max and his team. Go to the episode description, get the contact information, and reach out and uh, see what it is you can do to maybe consider the path to franchiseship. Now, with regards to that, I do want to encourage everyone here listening, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, we would love to have you actually receive notifications as to each and every week when we release a new episode. So definitely subscribe. And in doing so, take advantage of the various episodes that we have in our past. We can actually have you go to universalaccounting.com and there find podcast episodes, highlights that we've gathered over the years 
basically playlists that you can binge listen to based on your current needs and the various topics that you're interested in addressing. So go there and find out more information about various things that you're needing to do to work on your business today. The other thing I want to do is invite you to GrowCon. GrowCon is an annual event. It's a conference for the owners of bookkeeping, accounting, and tax businesses where you can literally come and hear from the experts hear what they have to say from the stage as to what it is that you need to be doing to work on your business, relevant information right now that's very timely. In addition to that, you can actually meet with your peers, find individuals that you can collaborate with, individuals that you can work with, and most importantly, work on your business. And then lastly, meet the staff here at Universal Accounting, those that are committed to actually helping you be in business, literally be in business for yourself, but not by yourself with Universal Accounting. So with all that being said, definitely check out universalaccounting.com for more information about the podcast and other free resources that we have available available to assist you as you're working on your business. In addition, if you would like to discuss these principles or other th- other topics as it relates to building the premier accounting firm, be sure to check out universalaccountingschool.com or giving us a phone call. You can reach us at 801-265-3777. And always remember this, accounting success is universal. Take care of a great day and be safe out there.